Thank you very much to the uh, conveners for inviting me along. It's a real honour to be um, part of this. It's an amazing system and uh, there is so much work that goes along. So um, thank you particularly to Sharon for getting us involved. So Surgical Anatomy of the Heart, The Elegance, um, I didn't choose the title but I think it's pretty apt. So these are some of the textbooks that I've used um, to have some of the pictures. We're all familiar with Netta. Uh, Carponte's Reconstructive Valve Surgery is an excellent uh, book as well. And Surgical Anatomy of the Heart is a very, very highly detailed textbook on anatomy of the heart. And if you have any interest, um, particularly in congenital, it has an excellent few chapters, very, very highly detailed. And it'll be suitable for cardiologists, for imaging specialists as well. So the aortic valve is a one-way valve separating the left ventricle from the aorta. It opens during systole, it closes during diastole. Um, in the vast, vast majority, 98% it has three cusps. It's bicuspid in a bit under 2% and then there's unicuspid or quadricuspid valves uh, very, very rarely. And there's a very nice picture showing how the aortic valve opens during systole and closes during diastole. So because it opens during systole, there's not a lot of pressure on it during systole. Um, very, when the leaflets are very mobile and there's no gradient, it doesn't take much. And during diastole, the closing pressure is just the diastolic pressure in the aorta. Um, and this is very different to the mitral valve. The mitral valve has to close during systole and there's a very rapid upstroke in the change in pressure in the DP by DT. It happens very, very quickly. And it has a much higher closing pressure because it's LV systolic pressure. And so that's why the mitral valve has to be thicker. It has to have a caudal apparatus to hold it from blowing backwards into the left atrium. The aortic valve, though, because it closes during diastole, which is obviously a lower pressure, and because diastole is a lot smoother, the leaflets can be a lot thinner. And so it doesn't need as much strength to close that. So there are three semilunar leaflets. Now, the shape of the aortic root aids in valve closure. The aortic root is from the valve to the side of the tube of the junction, and it's, it's curved, although you obviously can't see it. There are three sinuses, and they each bulge out. Um, and these help in, in closure of the valve. So during systole, the flow goes laminar straight, but also kind of starts to swirl into the sinuses. But then during diastole, more of a swirling causes this aortic valve closure. And this is important, as I'll show you in the picture, that if someone has an artificial aortic root where we sew in a valve with a conduit, with a tube, it does not have the same shape. And we've tried to mimic this um, with lots of different root replacements. Tyrone David in Toronto, he kind of formulated this and erupted the Tyrone David 5 operation where he tries to shape the sinuses to be more similar um, to the native valve. So here's a nice little picture from JTCVS showing the flow inside a normal subject. So this is the peak of systole and this is the end of systole. So you can, here's the velocity in meters per second. So you can see it's a very high velocity coming out the aortic valve into the ascending aorta. And then during late systole, as systole is ending and the pressure drops, you can see these swirls in the sinuses, which beautifully, they're symmetrical and close the valve. So this is what the normal aortic root looks like, the sinuses. And this is an artificial aortic root, so this is a straight graft. We do have some grafts of sinus of Alsalva, but they still don't mimic it properly. So in a straight graft where we've replaced the valve and we've reimplanted the coronary arteries, this is a very stiff tube. It doesn't have the same hemodynamic structure as the native aortic root, which really helps valve closure. And you can see here, this patient is a Marthans with, um, with, a, with a straight graft, and you can see the eddies are are very disorientated, they're not smooth, not symmetrical. And so we think that the aortic annulus clearly is supported by the root and the, the shape of it. So histologically, here's a section through the aorta, through the ventricular myocardium, and here's the aortic valve and the hinge. And so it's a very, it's a fibrous core lined with endothelium, very, very limited vascularity and very, very thin walled. Obviously in the native valve, with aortic stenosis and with age, hypertension, calcium disorders, patients can develop calcium and the valves become thicker. And this actually helps us with TAVI. It'd be very hard to put a TAVI into a valve that's very floppy. We're not quite there yet in the mainstream. With aortic regurgitation, with aortic stenosis, when this leaflet becomes a lot thicker, then you can secure something. The free edge is thickened and there's a nodule at a center, central point, the nodule of Arantius. So just briefly, the, the aortic nomenclature that we use, so the aorta is from the aortic annulus until the bifurcation of the aorta, which is in the common iliac arteries. And so when we speak about the aortic root, we're really speaking about from the annulus to the sinotubular junction. That is, that is the entire aortic root. 
the ascending aorta is from the sinotubular junction <coughs> till the base of the nominate artery, then you have the arch until the subclavian, then the descending aorta. So this is um, a view of the cardiac skeleton that supports the aortic valve, the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. So here's the aortic valve, you can see the, um, the sinuses with this curved shape. There's the left coronary artery, the right coronary artery, here's the non-coronary sinus, here's the mitral valve, here's the tricuspid valve. These are all centred on the central fibrous body of, of, the, of the heart. So this cardiac skeleton provides an insulating structure from the atria to the ventricles. So the atrial muscle and the ventricular muscle are electrically conductive, but you can't have them connecting to each other. You have to have this fibrous structure which both allows the valves to be hinged on it, but also provides insulation from atrial activity. You need to have the, the pause of 150 to 200 milliseconds to let the left ventricle and the right ventricle fill. So this is all insulated, and the only thing that penetrates it should be the AV node, which goes to the central fibrous body. And because the AV node has particular cells in it, it slows down conduction, giving it that time. And that's the PR interval we see on the QRS. Now if that's prolonged, then you know there's a problem with the AV node or his bundles. There can be aberrant conductions, the bundle of Kent. There can be Wolf Parkinson White is a classic scenario where you have aberrant conductions through an alternate pathway, not just through the AV node. So the cardiac skeleton has a few structures. And so the things here we can see is the aortic root, with the sinuses, the left coronary artery, the right coronary artery comes along here, goes around the tricuspid, the left main bifurcates into the circumflex around the, around the mitral annulus, and the LAD, the interventricular um, groove. And you can see here that the anterior leaf of the mitral valve is co closely in, um, related to the aortic valve. So this is the view that we see in surgery. So if we're operating, the surgeon stands on the right-hand side of the patient. This is the view that you would get. And we transect, we'll partially transect the ascending order above the sinotubular junction. And this is the view that we see. So we see the left coronary artery is kind of very much posterior. The right coronary artery is more anterior. You see the right leaflet, the non-coronary leaflet, and the left leaflet. And then you can see the anterior leaf of the mitral valve. This is the aortic mitral curtain, or the fibrous subaortic curtain that's called here, and the papillary muscle, the posterior medial, the anterolateral. The membranous septum sits underneath here in the triangle below the right in the non-coronary sinuses. The membranous septum sits in there. And when you're placing your sutures here, you have to be very careful not to get the AV node. Um, if you place them too deep, you can end up with a VST or AV nodal dysfunction. The left bundle branch then courses along here just beneath the surface of the endocardium. And so when you're doing a septal resection for hokum, you resect from beneath the right coronary artery to the right non-commissure, form a deep trench, and you will take out some of the left bundle branch block with that. So this is another view of the central fibrous body. So this is the right fibrous trigone, this is the left fibrous trigone. This is the anterior leaf of the mitral valve. And here's the anterolateral commissure, the posterior medial commissure. Here's the posterior leaflet, P1, P2, P3. And so the aorta mitral curtain is hinged between the left fibrous trigone and the right fibrous trigone. And here's the central fibrous body, which is very closely related to the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Here's another view. If you open up the aorta longitudinally, you can see the sinuses, the non, the left, the right. This triangle beneath the non and the right is where the membranous septum sits and the central fibrous body. The AV node comes through here, and the left bundle branch around here. Another view of the central fibrous body with the membranous septum, the right fibrous trigone, and the subcommissural triangle between the non and the right. This is another view of the membranous septum. So the membranous septum is at the, at, the, at the base of the interventricular muscular septum, and it's crossed by the tricuspid valve. So if you, this is a view from the left ventricle from the aorta, and the, the tricuspid valve crosses the membranous septum. So it forms an interventricular septum and also an atrioventricular septum. So above the hinge between the tricuspid valve, there's a communication, if there's a defect here, between the left ventricle and the right atrium. So bicuspid aortic valves, just briefly, about 2% of the population, they have associations with aortic aneurysms. They have early valve deterioration because the leaflets do not behave in a normal structure. There is increased forces of... Um, of mechanics which lead it to early calcification. They have larger annular size. The annulus is more ovoid. The coronary arteries can be often lower and more displaced sometimes towards the commissure, which can be a problem when, we, when you're replacing it and coarctation of the aorta. So the Sievers classification is a classification of bicuspid aortic valves, the Sievers type 0, type 1, type 2. And depends 
on whether they have a fused uh, chromosome and a fused raphe. So type 0 is what some people call the true bicuspid, and that's a, a, a bicuspid valve here. They have symmetrical leaflets. The coronaries are usually diametrically opposed, but not always. But they're only 5% of all bicuspids. The most common is the Cedars type 1 bicuspid, where there are two smaller cusps, the right and the left, normally, that are fused and are large and non. So this is a, this is a Cedars type 1, with the right and left that are fused and a, and a large non. And then the Cebus type 2 is a unicuspid, um, so there's just a single, cu single cusp here because these two are fused. Briefly, aortic valve replacement, again, the view that we have during surgery. So if you transect the aorta and you place your sutures, you're placing your sutures in the annulus, <coughs> and you usually start your sutures below the annulus, bring it above the annulus, you put them all in separately, and then slide the valve down. And you're always thinking as you place each suture, what structure can I be injuring on the other side of it? So am I close to the mitral valve? Am I close to the coronary? I don't want to put my suture too high up to the coronary. When I place this valve down, I can obstruct a coronary. Am I close to the membrane septum? Am I close to the AV node? That's it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent.